Chapter Four. Mr. Elton returned to Highbury a happy man. It was not long before everyone knew about his future wife. Her name was Augusta Hawkins, and she came from a family with money. Ten thousand pounds was the rumor in Highbury. Emma only saw him once or twice before he went to Bath again, but Harriet always seemed to see him or hear his voice. Everyone said he looked very much in love, and when she heard that, Harriet became more unhappy. One day, when they were shopping in Highbury, Emma and Harriet met Mister and Missus Weston. We have just been sitting with your father," said Mister Weston. "We wanted to tell you the good news. Frank is coming tomorrow and staying for a whole fortnight. We had a letter this morning, and we shall soon bring him over to Hartfield," said Missus Weston. They were both very happy, and Emma was delighted. She hoped Mr. Elton might be talked about less when Frank Churchill arrived in Highbury, and was looking forward to meeting him at last. The next morning, Emma was in her bedroom when she heard voices downstairs, and when she walked into the drawing room, there sat her father with Mr. Weston and his son. Mr. Weston introduced her. And explained that Frank had come a day earlier than they thought. He was a very handsome man, and he looked sensible and friendly. She felt immediately that she would like him. As they talked together, Frank asked Emma about herself and Highbury. Did she like walking and riding? Was it a pleasant society in Highbury? Did they have musical evenings and dancing? Were there balls? They talked about Mrs. Weston, and Frank said how much he liked her already. Emma looked at Mr. Weston, and could see what he was thinking. He had wanted to see them as a couple. After some time, Mr. Weston said they must go because he had business in Highbury, and Frank said he might spend the time visiting some people he knew a little. Miss Jane Fairfax and I met last summer in Weymouth. Do you know the family she lives with? Of course, Mr. Woodhouse was delighted to give Frank directions to find Mrs. Bates's house. Miss Fairfax is a beautiful woman and a brilliant musician," said Emma, and Frank agreed, but with a very quiet yes. Her aunt will talk to you without stopping," she continued. But they will make you very welcome. And so they left. But the next morning, Mr. Frank Churchill went to Hartfield to see Emma again. This time with Mrs. Weston. All three walked together into Highbury, and had a very pleasant morning. The more Emma talked to Frank, the more she believed Mr. Knightley had been wrong about him. They stopped to look at the Crown Inn, a hotel in Highbury, and Mrs. Weston told Frank about the ballroom there. He was immediately interested, although Emma said it was not used for balls any more. Frank looked through the windows and said it was a beautiful room and should be used again. "You must arrange it, Miss Woodhouse," he said, and Emma laughed at the idea. Emma's good opinion of Frank was shaken a little the next day, when she heard he had gone to London just to have his hair cut. There was nothing wrong with that, except that it did not seem very sensible. But generally, everyone in Highbury seemed to think Frank was a very good young man. Everyone except Mister Knightley. He was not surprised to hear about Frank's trip to London. And said he thought it was a silly thing to do. That evening, Frank returned to Randalls from London. He had had his hair cut, and laughed at himself for doing it. He was not ashamed, 
and Emma began to think there was nothing wrong in it after all. There was other news in Highbury that was more important. Some neighbours, Mr. and Mrs. Cole, were going to hold a dinner party. The Coles had a large and beautiful house. There was always music there, and there might possibly be dancing. On the night of the party, Emma's carriage arrived at the Coles house behind Mr. Knightley's. I am surprised to see your carriage," she said. "You usually walk or ride everywhere, but this is more suitable for a gentleman. So now I shall really be very happy to walk into the same room with you." Mr. Knightley laughed at her, and they went into the party together. At dinner, Emma sat next to Frank, and they talked together about society in Highbury. Jane Fairfax sat across the table from them, wondering what they were talking about. Emma wondered whether other guests thought she and Frank were a special couple. After dinner, when he joined the ladies in the drawing room, he came across the room and sat next to Emma again. She began to realize that his life with his aunt and uncle was very boring. We never see anyone new, and never have parties. My aunt is often ill, and it is difficult for her to let me go away from home on my own. Harriet and some other young ladies were invited to arrive after dinner, and Emma was happy to see Harriet looking pretty and confident when she came into the room. Frank spoke to Jane for a short time. And was polite and friendly to Miss Bates. Before he could get back to his seat next to Emma, Mrs. Weston had taken it. I have just made a little plan," said Mrs. Weston. "How do you think Miss Bates and her niece came here tonight?" she asked. "I suppose they walked." Exactly. I suddenly thought it was not a very good idea for Jane to walk home late on a cold night, so Mr. Weston suggested to Miss Bates that we should take them in our carriage. But she said Mr. Knightley had already offered his. I wonder if that is why he used his carriage. You know he usually walks. Yes, that is typical of him," said Emma. You know how kind he always is, but perhaps it is more than kindness. The more I think about it, the more I am sure that I have made a match between Miss Fairfax and Mister Knightley. Dear Missus Weston, how could you think of such a thing? Mister Knightley must not marry. Isabella's son should have the family house after him. No, no. I cannot agree to Mr. Knightley's marrying, and I am sure it is not at all likely to happen," whispered Emma. "And Jane Fairfax too, of all women," she added. "She has always been a favourite with him," said Mrs. Weston, "and I cannot see anything unsuitable in the match." Emma would not listen. "Mr. Knightley does not want to marry." Why should he? He is happy by himself with his farm and his sheep and his library. But if he really loves Jane Fairfax, no, no, you are quite wrong. Believe me, this is not a good match or a possible one," Emma replied. They talked a little more, and then when Emma looked around, she saw that Frank was sitting with Jane. At that moment, Mr. Cole asked Emma to play the piano and sing. She agreed, but after two songs, she invited Jane to play. Emma sat down and looked across at Mr. Knightley. He was listening very carefully to Jane, and Emma started to wonder about what Mrs. Weston had said. When Jane finished her songs. Somebody suggested dancing, and the room was quickly prepared. 
Mrs. Weston sat at the piano, and immediately Frank took Emma's hand and led her to the centre of the room. While the other couples were getting ready, Emma looked round for Mr. Knightley. She knew he did not like dancing, and if he danced with Jane Fairfax, it might possibly mean something. But she saw he was talking to Mrs. Cole, and another man had asked Jane to dance. Emma enjoyed dancing with Frank, and was sorry that there were only two dances before someone said it was getting late. And they all ought to go home. Frank took Emma to her carriage. Perhaps it was a good thing we had to stop, he said. Soon, I would have had to ask Miss Fairfax, and she does not dance as well as you. Dancing with you was wonderful, he told her as they said good night. <laughs>